And then I would go visit someone like Brother Chris. Go to their truck where it's organized, where you know everything is. And where the floor, you can actually see the floor mats. It is clean. And he has a trash bag hanging there to put your cans and your potato chip bags and stuff in. He doesn't let anybody else interfere with his work attitude. My truck, I will keep it clean. I went to work one time on a, as a young young climber. Went to work on a truck that had a very, very sloppy foreman. Do you know, church, now listen, you may not agree, but I've seen it too many times. Do you know that the Bible teaches us to have good work ethics and everything. He says, if you don't work, you don't want to eat. He says, that what you do, do as you're doing it unto the Lord. Whenever that you're driving that truck in your mind, in your spirit person, you need to drive that truck like God owns it. God gave you that job. I, you might have an uncle or somebody that you know, got you in there or family may have hired you, whatever. But ultimately, God gave you that job and we need to have a good attitude about it. I went to work on this truck where the, the boss, the foreman of the truck, was a pig. I mean, nothing. And I, a little bit at a time, I started cleaning and I, I got a little brush. I took out of my own personal vehicle and I would sweep the floors out every, not just every little moment that I got, Brother Clark, I, I tried to improve it. And before, whenever I got to the point to where I was a, a journeyman and I went on another crew, he got addicted to a clean truck. And the next guy that come on threw his pop can in the floorboard. He said, hey, it don't go there. It goes in the bag. You see, we would save all of them little speed muck, speedway bags and stuff when we go to the store. Hang them right there on a knob somewhere. Put the trash in it. A good work attitude is just as addictive as bad ones. We just don't have enough good work attitudes. God's idea, man's idea is just, I'm going to go pay the bills. I'm going to do what I need to do, and that's it. I'm coming home. God's idea of work is to see that at the end of every day, we look back on what we did to say, it is good. Where did that come from? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2. The Bible says in the very first day, God said, let there be light. And God saw that there was light and it was good. Next day, God separated the land from the water. God created trees. God created the heavens. He created birds. And every day after that, God created something. Kim asked me last night as I was telling her about this. She said, do you think it was an actual 24-hour day or was it a thousand years for God to do that? Because in our puny little minds, we can't see God doing all this in a 24-hour period. But I believe that he did because that word day, if you go in there and begin to break it down to the Greek and the Hebrew translation, it means a 24-hour period. And after the first, second, and third day, and fourth day, and the fifth day, after all those days when God was done, you know what God said? God looked back on his work and he said, it is good. Can we do that? Can we look back on a day, or do we got to look back and say, I could have done better there. I could have done better here. If we start getting ourselves and holding ourselves accountable to fulfilling the Christian title, to be Christ-like, to be God-like, to be to the point to where we want to do what God did, God looked back after God worked, and God said, this is good. Now, God didn't go to bed and tuck up his heavenly pillow and lay his head down and go to sleep. That wasn't like that, church. But God looked back on his work and he saw that it was good. That's what we need to do. Look back on it and ask what will, and be able to say it is good. Taking care to make sure our job positively impacts someone else. Now, before we go any farther, that's what God did. God separated the water and the land because God knew that in four more days he was going to create man, put him in the garden, and God he did not want to make man to where he had to walk around in swampy mud water all the time. So God separated the land from the water. God made the trees to where he knew that Adam was going to be able to walk up and pick that fruit off the trees. God made everything to benefit man. Everything about the planet was created for man. 
In the beginning, we were vegan. We did not eat meat. But later on, thank God, that he changed it in the book of uh, Acts whenever that he let down the four uh, uh, corners of the sheep, Brother John, unto uh, Peter. And he says, Arise, slay, and eat. He says, Lord, nothing common around clean touch my lips. God got offended by it. God said, Call not that which I have a blessed common or unclean. Now arise, slay, and eat. And he was able to go eat pork. Oh, hallelujah, and thank God. <laughs> now we can have bacon and ham and pork chops and steak. Now we're allowed to have those things, church. You know why? Because God blessed it. And what God done, he made it for the benefit of mankind. Yeah. A lot of people say, Brother Bill, you're preaching carnal. No, I'm not. I'm preaching biblical. You get somebody out there that they're organic vegans and they don't want, go ahead and eat weeds. It's fine. Nobody's stopping you. God made that for you, but God also made meat for us. <laughs> and we see that God done all that to benefit us. That's what we need to ask. Take care of making sure that our job positively impacts someone else. When I was back there at Mills Pride and I went on third shift and I was cleaning up, that was to benefit everybody coming in on third shift or on first shift. Because the third shift work area was nice, neat, organized, and clean. Now when the first shifters come in, they had a bar, Brother Clark. I set the bar for them to hold. Keep it clean. Keep it neat. If I come in tonight and it's a mess, somebody's going to answer. Why'd you mess up the work area? I left you a good clean one. You left me a messy one. You ever have that problem? Yeah. You, ever, you ever come in on the job somewhere? Somebody... somebody borrows your workstation, has to fill in or whatnot, or maybe take some of your tools or, or does something, and then they leave you a mess when you left it all nice and neat, tidy. <laughs> Look at the rest of it. He says you would have to have that. To do, be able to do this. Say it is good. Make sure that it positively impacts someone else. And then the reward is knowing that you did your absolute best and no one else has to even know about it. We, we are a generation of backslappers. Give me an attaboy, Brother Clark. He won't even do it. I'm going to have to sit down here in a minute and let little Brother Jackson come up and preach again. People want an attaboy. People want a, a slap on the shoulder, Brother Dean. That's what all they live for. They say, well, I would appreciate that a lot more than I would money on the hour. You have the wrong concept altogether of working. Is your work good whether you get a pat on the back or not? That's what you need to be asking yourself. That's what we need to be saying. Did we do a good job even though nobody said anything about it? I promise you somebody further up the ladder notices. Somebody notices what you're doing. Somebody knows that extra work of what you do. I was thinking back as I was contemplating and praying and meditating and, and researching this, this sermon that God laid on my heart. And I thought about some of my teachers going back. And Sister Penny can appreciate this. Sister Renee was here. I can include her in that. But anybody that has anything to do with teaching, you know what I'm talking about. And I went back and I thought about it. And I had this one teacher. His name was uh, Mr. Popovich. George Popovich, you remember him? He taught me. Yeah. Yes, and he, he was the he had the Bible club over there at the Beaver the Beaver Middle School, and Mr. Popovich taught me also, and he always had this demeanor about him. Always had on a suit jacket and a tie every day. You never saw him without a suit and a tie. Other teachers would come in casual. Not Mr. Popovich. Had a suit and tie. He came in. He would and always address us in the morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Had that demeanor. He sat for us. And whenever that you would come out of somebody else's class, that they just seems like that they were just scolding the whole class and was trying to beat 
that lesson into your head and really they were there for the money. They weren't there to educate children. And then you go and you sat in Mr. Popovich's class. It was like a sigh of relief. I don't know about all those other kids, Brother Dean, but when I went in and sat down, I knew he respected me. Mr. Popovich wanted to make sure that I got all the education I could. He taught me history. One of my favorite teachers because he showed me respect. One of my favorite teachers because, Brother John, his desk was always neat. You never see anything out of place. His books were in a corner. They wasn't sloppy. They was, they was lined up. People today call that OCD. You call it what you want. I, he earned <coughs> my respect. I love that man. As a teacher, all the other ones would laugh and tell jokes and everything, and Mr. Popovich wanted to make sure by the end of that class period that we understood what he taught us. And he had such a way of doing it. Such a such a, a, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. He made an impact on me. Does he know that? Maybe somewhere he might have realized that maybe at the end of the day, I believe this was his philosophy. That's how he worked. He loved his job, and he kept on doing it. When things got good, when things got bad, didn't matter. Mr. Popovich was the same, consistent right there. Us kids could rely on him. Ask yourself this question. I don't know what you do today. You say, Brother Bill, this is one of the oddest sermons I ever had. Amen to that, because I tell you, God beat me up over this. I have to change my work attitude. Make sure, go the extra mile to make a difference because it's going to impact somebody else down the line. And it's not just about paying the bills and bringing home the, the bacon, as they say, they say. Look back, and at the end of that day, can you say to yourself, it was a good day today. Kim and I do this with each other whenever we, if we ever get the chance to do it, was just to work at the house. She does this. We'll be sitting there and getting ready to eat dinner or whatever, and she say, it's been a good day. We got this, this, and this done, got that done. You never got hurt. <laughs> it's, a good, it's been a good day. And that is what we need. She's practicing biblical work attitude. And that's what we need today, amen? Let's all be standing this morning. I just... I don't even really know if it's necessary, but I at least want to give the opportunity. Just join me in a prayer because I'm sure that we all probably could use it. Or if you don't, you think you're already living this, then pray for everybody else. It's not, okay? All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the ability, Lord God, to work at our jobs. Thank you for giving us our jobs. Lord, we seem to complain sometimes about them. But there's somebody else that's laid off and unemployed that would love to have our job. Mm -hmm. Father, I praise you, Lord. I thank you for my job. The days that it seems like that they no one cares, Lord, I know that you care. Father, and I, I pray that I can change some habits uh, from mediocre to good, from bad to good. I pray, Father, that I can be able to look back at the end of every day and be able to say it's been a good day. Mm -hmm. Lord, knowing that I did all I could do, Father, and, and be able to give you praise and glory for giving me that job and my abilities to do that job. I pray that everyone, that Lord, that's under our voice today would have the same attitude. Lord, if it needs adjusting, then we pray that you would give us the adjustments that we need. Father, we thank you, Lord. Work is good. Lord, we know that you set forth the, the, the pattern for us. Lord, and we need to follow your pattern. We give you praise and glory for all these things. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children say this. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Before we do close up, I want everybody to, one thing I did did not get to be able to put up here, I forgot it. Looking up that word work in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, under God, actually means ministry. When you look it up in the Hebrew translation, the word work, when God finished his work, you can look at that in the Bible. If you if you put that plug that word in there, Brother John, it actually says, when God finished his ministry. He saw that it was good. To be able to minister means to what? Minister means to help others. 
It means to help others. And I just, uh, I forgot to mention that. I thought that was important. So I don't know what everybody's facing. To me, I'm kind of in between jobs, working on closing one out and going to another one. And I'm just, I, I praise God, you know, we may, may not have jobs. We need to thank God for everything that we do have and give him praise and glory for it. We love you this morning. Brother Dean. Thank you, Brother Bill, for that <clears throat> message this morning. Pray that we can take it with us and and use it to make us a better a better person, maybe in life. And, uh, I got to thinking about it. Uh, our our work ethics. You know, we can we can use that the same way and say that we can use that as our ethics toward serving the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we we can use that in the same way because uh, we need to, we need to put forth more effort in serving the Lord than what we do. I know I do. I don't put forth near enough uh, worth ethics in uh, serving the Lord and, and studying His Word and telling others about the goodness of the Lord. So it's really kind of a twofold message if you want to look at it that way. Okay, we're going. Change the order of the service here this morning. Uh, do we have anybody in the past week that's had a birthday? Any birthdays? Or in the past few weeks, if you hadn't been here for one reason or another? I had one the fourth. Did you already uh, go up? Huh? Did you already go up? No, I didn't. Me and Penny uh -oh. had one. <laughs> well, go on. A birthday? Come on. Make it a walk. Well, <laughs> well, that was 17 days ago. We haven't had church. A lot, a lot of people miss them because they're not. We haven't had church. We don't want to cheat you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. I don't think that would cover them. Just a dollar. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, how about anniversaries? Had any anniversaries in the past week or two? Or... Jackson. Okay. Uh, let's get a Bible count. <laughs> Fourteen is correct to count.
No. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> okay, how about those with Bible words? So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews 13 6. All right, good job, Bobby. Anyone else? Perfect. There, there's no candy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, way of announcements, I suppose, this Wednesday night service. 7 o'clock, remember that. Those that can come. Okay, if nothing more then, uh, teachers can claim their classes. Thank <laughs> you.